Hello again. This is Jeff Robertson, National Sales Manager for Penton Audio USC and Atis Electronics. And this is our part two of a two part video tutorial series on actually getting started with the AT Studio software, configuring, connecting. Part two is actually going to talk more about the design and creating a design, getting a design out of a unit, compiling and storing a design. So let's get started. I got my T Studio software right here. And what I want to do is I've got my unit right here that I have connected to previously. There are three ways that you can actually put a design into a unit or come up with a design. One way, obviously, is just to create a brand new design from scratch, uh, which you can do not being connected to the unit. You can do this totally independent and then connect and download the, the design later. Uh, another way is to pull up a design that you've already created and edit it or either just you know pull it up, compile and store it once you're connected. And another way is actually pull up what's already in the unit, take a look at it and edit it and compile and store it back in the unit as well. Our software is just like most other DSP softwares that when you do a design, you must first compile the design, which will check for errors and make sure you don't have any design issues. And then after you compile, you actually go through the action of storing the design into the unit, which is the physical act of downloading the design from your PC, either direct connect or via the network into the unit to be used in its normal operations. Let's take a look at how do we get into a unit and pull a design that's residing within the unit up so we can look at it, edit it, and then stick it back in there. Well, the first thing I want to do is I want to connect. If you do not know about connecting and configuring, please view part one of this two-part series on a T-Studio configuration, which goes through all about how to search and connect up with the units and configure your software. All right, so I am connected right now. And what I will do is over here on the right, well, one of my options once I'm connected is to reverse. So I'll make sure I got my unit highlighted here. And I will actually reverse I, that's the previous one I was working on. I don't need to save it. And there we go. And there's my demo ECS. Let's pull this up. Uh, just for fun, let's make a quick change. Let's just add this circuit in there. Uh, we can add, there we go, just to show that we made some changes. All right, and we can even take this out if we wanted to and take it to our TC output. All right, and I'll go in here and I'll actually save this design and I'll save it where I keep most of my designs and ECS file and I know this is my demo so I'll go ahead and just overwrite that yes alright now once I've made all the changes to my design or whatever remember I pulled this out of the the unit so I know all the configuration and everything is right there I can see the name of the unit I'm working uh, with is ECS1 no problem remember you can have up to 32 ECS's or 128 LAP's or 32 out of 8's in a single system so I go up to operation and I want to compile I did my compile and I got no warnings or errors. If there were any warnings or errors, they would pop up there before the window went off to let me know what they were and kind of give me some heads up. Sometimes warnings are just five programmed, uh, some of the remote, like the remote paging stations or remote controls, and maybe they're not hooked up yet. And so when I do it, it'll say, hey, there's, you know, you've programmed some stuff in there that it doesn't see yet. It'll still let you compile and store. It's just giving you a heads up that, you know something is amiss now the second step after we've compiled it is to store and when we say store remember this means I'm actually going to physically take this design and dump it back into the box to overwrite whatever design is there and that will become the working design for the unit so I could store and we'll see the progress bar up here it's a small design so it goes in fairly quickly and when that is done it asks me do I want to turn the audio on and I'll say yes and we look down here, store is completed, we are done. I can disconnect now if I wanted to, and now the unit is running with this design in it, and everybody is lucky door. That is how to actually get a design out of there. We call it in Pent and Speak Reverse, which is basically just like uploading a design from the unit into your um, computer or downloading it, whatever you prefer. Now, I will close this design out, and let's say we want to open a design, and I won't save this, we already did and I'll go to where I keep my files and we will just pull a file out of here there we go and I just opened up a file you notice I'm still disconnected and that's the one that I want so I can pull up this design and I check yes I got the same configuration one AEC chip and I got my four input nodes and my one output nodes and all the other stuff so we should be right so I will connect to the unit 
and we are connected at this point I'll take this compile and we compiled it now I will store it and now we're actually uploading this different design into the unit so that's so you can just open up an existing design and dump it into the unit or pull what's in that unit out all right and we're completed with this one now the third way that you can actually work with a design is to create one right from scratch I got to disconnect first before I start doing a design there we go now I'll go up here and I'll do file new don't need to save that now when you come up with a new file I don't need to be connected or anything like that no big deal so the first thing I want to do is I want to go view my main and this brings up all my my device tab which are all my processors Here's my processors and here's all my remotes that I could put on the unit as well. Your remote controls, your PSS and PPM, paging stations and all this other stuff. So there's a bunch of stuff that you could put in here. The speakers, amplifier and others, these are actually just GIFs or PIC files that you could put on there for representation purposes only. They don't do anything with the software or anything like that. So, so I'm going to be connected to an ECS. Let's just pull an ECS. I can highlight any of these that I want, but I'll just highlight this, uh, drag and click. And this brings up my configuration. Now this is very important because the configuration and the order that you put your input and outputs and your AEC counts on must match what's in your unit or else you're going to get errors when you try to compile and store. On my unit here I have no card in slot A and slot B is an output card and the other four slots C, D, E, and F are all input cards. And I only have one four channel AEC chip. Now on the ECS, as you talked about in my video for sales features, you can have up to four four channel AEC or audio echo cancellation chips in there to give you a total of 16 echo canceling channels within a single ECS system. So then you can have 32 boxes. So four or 16 times 32, you can see your echo canceling could get fairly large in a big system. One chip, four channel chip in this box right here. So I've got my configuration done. I will create it. Now I can open this up. There's my AEC. There's my output. Uh, there's two of my inputs and they're just spaced out here. So let's go grab these two right here. So just for fun, let's do a couple of things. Let's bring in, I know I got a telco card in here so I can bring a telco card in. There we go. We got our receive. One thing about our AEC chips is they are totally independent of the inputs. So I could take those inputs and wire them into an AEC or I could take these four and wire them into an AEC if I want. And just to show you that, there we go. I'll take this and run it as my reference. As you notice on our T-Studio, we could do right angles. All you do is you click to start a line. You go to where you want to start and hit a node. Let me say start a line. Go to where you want to know. Click again and you go to your finishing node and there you go take each single node by itself like this or if i wanted to i can just hit this oval in the middle and that's that actually wires up all the output nodes there you go bring in and a mixer let's bring these into the mixer and one of these outputs so we have something all right so there we go. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to compile this, make sure I don't have any issues. All right, we do have one because it says the ID of the ATIS is not identified. Now that's just a warning. It's not an error, so that's fine. But before I go to store, I have to actually tell it which one I want it to store to and give it a name. So the one thing I want to do is I will highlight this and then I will say connect. And then usually I got to click on the name and make sure I grab the white one because the first box, you can have up to 32 of these boxes. And the first one is the one that you actually download the design to. It will download the designs for all the other boxes. So it just has to know which one it is. So as long as I got the name of the main box I'm talking to right here in the name, I will be fine. And just to show you that, if I do a compile now, see, no warnings, no errors, no warnings. I'll do a store. And here we go with the store. If I tried to compile it without doing that name part to make sure I identify the exact one in there, then I would it would stop me, give me a warning, it says, hey, I don't know what box you want to put this in. You need to tell me. That's a very common question that we get in tech support. So all you got to do is make sure once you're connected that when you go in there, just make sure you just double click down here in the name if you do not see a name for that box in here. So there you go. Now, let's just for fun, let's disconnect this. 
I want to purposely make a, a, a mistake. So let me close that. Let's say file new. And we'll say no, I don't need to save it. It's already in the machine, so I don't really need to keep it. I'll bring an ECS in here. And for whatever fun, let's just say we've got, we'll leave these configuration this. We'll say there's actually two AECs in there. So I got a mismatch here with A, and I got an extra AEC in here that I know I do not have on my unit that I'm getting ready to connect to. We'll take these to that. We'll take these to that. Make sure I actually click on it. There we go. Now we will go up here and we'll do operation. We will compile. All right, we will compile. Once again, I don't have the network because I haven't told it what the ID or which one I want to connect to. So it's just, it did the compile. Everything's fine. We just had one warning. All right, so now I will connect to the unit. All right, I can even go up in here and give it the name. That's the one I want to hook to because all these other ones will be here. And once I do that, the serial number and everything's there. Now, let's try to store this and see what happens. All right. As we read down here, we got nothing on the progress. It says, check in device info failed. Store was aborted. The audio mode of device 222 is not compatible with the software's configuration. Please check the device to modify the software's configuration. So what it's telling me is my audio configuration right here between my input and outputs and AEC are not compatible with what's actually in the unit. So it will not let you store. So that's one of the common errors on there. So just remember, you cannot store or attempt to store a design that does not match the configuration. That's why it's extremely important at the beginning that you know that your configuration, that when you bring an ECS in, such as if I bring this other one in here, that this configuration right here matches exactly what you're going to have in your unit because if it does not it will not let you store it because it will be a mismatch i hope that will get you started please if you got any questions visit our website at www.penton-usa.com and also look for other fun at studio training videos as well as our uap training videos on youtube thank you very much and have a terrific day